Welcome back to What Are Teen Nibs? This is the Leopard Prototype A. It's a tier 9 German medium tank. It's located on the east spawn of Malinovka Encounter and it's under the command of Sly Meerkat. And he's alongside his uh, platoon mate, Sean Bean, in the X 91 PT, the tier 9 Soviet tank destroyer, premium tank destroyer. Game started. Well, I hope it's a better rendering for Sean Bean than he normally gets in most movies. Don't know if you know, but Sean Bean gets uh, killed off in more movies and ser TV series than just about any other character. In fact, there's a website that actually lists where in each movie that he's been in, Sean Bean gets killed. Yup, because he gets killed in quite a lot. He got killed just before the end of the first series of Game of Thrones, which must have been a bit disappointing to him because I... He probably felt that he should stay the length of the entire series. Okay, well, Leopard Prototype. What can I tell you about this tank? It was one of a number of prototypes. There was 26 of them in total that were actually developed during 1960 to 1961. And the Germans were actually trying to develop a medium tank for the Bundeswehr. And... They continued testing these prototypes up until 1963 and finally they decided on the characteristics they wanted for the Leopard tank and that became the tier 10 German medium tank. So let's see how he gets on in this one. Oh, we've got a high roll there. It's a 105mm round gun with uh, 420 Alpha and he managed to get 440 out of that M103 but he took a round. And since the M103's got a 120 millimeter, yeah, he took 399 in return. The one of the bad things about the Leopards are they don't have much in the way of armor, so you can't really easily withstand shots. And he got that one in for 461. And it sounds like he's got a content creator as uh, his commander. I don't know which one, but he'll probably let us know. Ooh, ow, the M103 got a hit. 369 is a low roll for the M103, but yes, he's got no arm, you see, so effectively he really should be very careful. The highest armor on this vehicle is in the front of the hull, 70 millimeters. In the front of the turret is only 52. Very, very light armor all round, and that's why it goes fast. 65 kilometers an hour top speed. But the 105mm gun is very good, and you saw he just took down the tortoise, firing directly into the weak spot. Now, the, the gun is so good, it's really good for sniping at the enemy. It's incredibly accurate. It's got decent alpha, 420. Um, so it's, it's, it's excellent, really, as a gun, but the trouble is, and it's accurate as well, but um, the problem is it just doesn't have a great DPM. So, uh, despite the fact that you've got a hyper-accurate gun, which is very deadly, good pen, you uh, don't have a good reload rate. Standard reload is 10.16, he's got 8.07. M103 pops out for a moment. If he pops out again, I think he'll be ready for the shot this time, because he'll be waiting for Sly to move forward. Sly's terribly vulnerable in this position. Okay, well now the Object Travel 7 and the T-95 are going for the M103. It's a one-shot. And there's the kill. They were waiting for him to whittle, or for his teammates to whittle away the armor on those guys until he was ready. And then he pounced in for the kill. Puts one into the E-75 and tracks him. Excellent. Makes him easy for the Object Travel 7 to get a shot in. He did. We're now going to get another shot if he pops up. Oh, he didn't. He didn't get it, but he used the Travel 7 for cover. And now the E-75 is going after... Oh, he hit us instead of the Travel 7. 509 hit points from that 128mm gun. Not good. Side of the Jack Tiger puts one into his track. Tracks him in place. Picks up another 390, which is a low roll. Does it again! And he also picks up damage assist here because he tracked the guy in place to allow his teammates to get the hit. And oh, the enemy RT is aiming in our direction. It's a batch at 155.55. So he's decided to pull away and try and snipe from the top of the hill. 
Object 704 goes down to his platoon mate, Sean Bean. So he's not a has-been yet, he's a Sean Bean. Oh, that's a bad joke, isn't it? Yeah, I'll get me coat. Okay, so what's next? I think he's going to wait for his teammates to go down the hill first. Let them take most of the fire and then he'll follow them up afterwards and try and snatch a few kills. Okay, T95, he can snipe this guy from up here. Oh, AMX 1390 just had a rather harsh death at the hands of the De Doom Turtle. The enemy are losing by three tanks at the moment, but you know battles can turn very quickly. We seem to have control of the cap area as well. Now I'm not sure what he was doing. I think he wasn't watching where he was driving and that's why he went over the rock. But uh, I think he's trying to think tactically what he needs to do next. And yes, takes the quick and easy route down that slide. And he's coming down to join his platoon mate. Who still has all his health. Well, I suppose in the film Goldeneye, Sean Bean died right at the end, didn't he? When the uh, the uh, antenna at the Arecibo uh, Observatory fell on top of him. I suppose he's waiting right till the end, uh, Sean Bean. Mind you, at the end of the first series of Game of Thrones, he had his head chopped off, didn't he? By, uh, by uh, King Joffrey. He didn't die in the um, series Sharp, though, surprisingly, but I think that's because he was the title character. If he died off in that one, I think it would have put an end to the series. Okay, we can see that that enemy RT is still in the woods. And the T-95 is kind of blocking us at the moment, but Sean Bean is now firing on the T-95. He's a one-shot. He will go out the game with the next penetration. And we got a TNH Viz 51, and I think that uh, Sly can probably have a go at him if he backs up just a little bit more. Either that or he needs to go a bit closer. He's hiding in the bushes at this moment. Oh! Sean Bean takes the kill! And the T95 is still hiding. We're only two up on the enemy now, and he's just spotted an Uda 16 off in the distance. And Sean Bean took some hits there, big hits, and he's lost a lot of his hit points in the process. Now I think the Unit 16 is actually hiding behind a wreck, but he just got taken out by our Yank Tiger. In fact, Sean Bean's now down to a one shot, and he just got s splattered by the enemy RT, and Yes, he has died. So Sean Bean has died in this movie as well, or rather this game. Actually, it's Seen Bean, not Sean Bean, but you know what I mean. Play on words. Okay, that T95 is still there. And looks like he's just been hit by RRT because he just got stunned. And it looks like the Batch at 155.55 is trying to stun R263. He's trying to get at him. And there goes the Doom Turtle. Quick shake of the rescue there for uh, Sly. Only four enemies remain. One of Marty. Ooh, our Progetto 66 just died to the... Uh, Enemy Progetto 66. Nice shot into the camp Panzer 50 ton. 432, which is a low roll. Or was that high roll? High roll, sorry. And he ricochets off the hull of the Progetto 66. A bit higher. Oh, that's better. Oh, critical hit. So it, that one was eaten by the tracks as well. And the enemy standard B is just coming to sight and he has been spotted. He puts one into the standard B for 447, another high roll. Is that guy firing this way? Nope. And the old RRT got him. In fact, actually, there was a lot of uh, track. He got a lot of track assist there or damage assist from uh, that guy being taken out by RRT. 
but one of the enemy tanks, the Camp Panzer 50 Ton, has gone up the hill to try and escape the melee down this end. And in fact, he's one of only two left in the game. And I'm not sure why Sly's going in this direction, but the enemy arty is still alive. I think he thinks he's over this side of the inlet. I'd go and get the arty if I was you. I think that's what he's going to do. He's loaded an HE round. The 105mm, oh he's going the right direction now, I think he was misdirecting the enemy. 510 alpha from these guns, and there he is. One shot's all it takes. He had been hit before. Okay, the 50 ton has gone up on top of the hill. The thing is that uh, Sly in the Leopard prototype is probably the best tank to chase him, because he's got a top speed of 65 kilometers now, so he could get up there after the Kampfpanzer. In the meantime, he's telling his teammates to cap. And that is also the wise decision. It forces the camp panzer to get into a position to try and get a reset. And that might make him vulnerable to a sniping shot. Also, it would help if the Waffentrager would get into the right position as well. And he needs to have the bushes behind him so that he can uh, use the bush mechanic. In fact, he's sitting out in front of the bushes there. And we are now capping. The Yank Tigers got in there. Sly's decided to cut straight across to the other side of the hill. And I suspect that uh, the batch at 155-55 on our team made the right decision to get into the cap because I think that the 50 ton was going down through the woods trying to find him. In fact, actually, he did find him. He's just killed him. And there he is. He's actually just a short distance away from us. There you go. It didn't kill him, but it got a high roll, 422, and he was killed by the next shot by the Yank Tiger. So the first game ends in a victory. Here's the end of battle stats for the first game, and it was an ace tanker for Sly Meerkat in the Leopard Prototype A. Eh? He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. In fact, he did that from one shot alone. I think actually the, the shot, or it may have been damage assist when he fired on the standard B and the RT managed to get a lucky shot that did a lot of damage. He also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got seven. He got a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points for his own vehicle. And he got a confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. We look at team score. We can see that he's top on damage. He managed to get 4,947 hit points, but no high caliber because it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit point. I don't think he hit any of his teammates during that encounter. So uh, I don't think he was disqualified in any way. Uh, at least I don't think so. I'll um, need to check that later on. Um, 3,817 hit points went to the Doom Turtle on the enemy team. He actually also managed to uh, get the kill on Sean Bean. And at least I think he did as well. Um, you can just check that as well on top. Uh, Dylan, yep. That's Dylan, yes. Yeah, so he did kill Sean Bean, I'm afraid, in that one. And the third highest damage in the game actually falls to the prototype standard B on the enemy team. 3,476, just tipping the Object Treble 7 version 2 with 3,437. Very close. When it came to kills, it was the Ag Tiger who did the best. He got four kills in that game. Shot, uh, Sly Meerkat got, managed to get three. The Object Treble 7 version 2 got three, and so did the T95 on the enemy team. And when it came to base XP, it was Sly who did the best with 1,458. 1,202 went to the Object Travel 7 version 2. And they were the only two players who managed to get over 1,000. We can see that Sean Bean, he did uh, fairly well. 1,417 hit points of damage. He got two kills out of the game and 730 base XP. Sly fired 20 rounds in that game. Got 16 direct hits and 13 penetrations. Damage of 4,947 hit points, of which 854 were at more than 300 meters. Received four hits from the enemy, three of them penetrated, one non penetration. I'm afraid the um, two of those penetrating shots came from the M103, the other one came from the E75, who came over the edge and blasted one into him. Uh, unfortunately, that was the more expensive one because it was the 128mm gun instead of the 120 on the M103. And I don't know who actually got the non-penetration off him, but uh, that was probably one shot that hit the tracks. Two enemy vehicles spotted. 
10 enemy vehicles damage, 3 killed, 3,233 hit points of damage assistance. So I think partially that big hit that the standard B took enabled him to get the spotter badge. Either that or it was the damage assist that he did by tracking the guy and allowing the RT to get the kill in the process. 56,585 credits on a premium account. After repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables, he took away a loss of 30,768 credits. Yes, I'm afraid he did have to use the premium rounds on this one because, yes, he was up against some serious opposition. 1,458 XP, 328 for playing in the platoon, took away 2,515 experience points altogether. So not a bad game. He played tactically. He also played to his uh, weakness in terms of the fact that it doesn't have much armor. So you can't afford to get seen by the enemy or hold by the enemy. If the enemy points his gun in your direction, you need to be uh, scarce so they can't get a shot into you. Unfortunately, he was playing peak boom with the M103 right at the start of the game, and that cost him a fair amount of hit points. And you really can't afford to do that. And also, he was very unlucky that the E-25 went after him when he came over that uh, ridgeline instead of going after the Object Travel 7 version 2, mainly because he probably thought that he would easily get a penetration off Sly, whereas he probably wouldn't get such a good penetration off the Treble 7 2. It just goes to show sometimes if you pick your target correctly, you can actually get good damage out of his shots instead of actually having the shell ricochet off. Unfortunately, Sly did have a few ricochets during that game, and instead of actually getting pens, especially on that uh, that uh, Progetto 66, he should have been able to pen that guy, but unfortunately just hit the wrong angles, and I think it hit the tracks so, or or just bounced off at the wrong um, off the wrong side of the turret. So good games the first one. Let's have a look at the second replay. In the second replay, we've got the foothills map, and um, Sly's still in his uh, leopard prototype A, but there's no sign of Sean Bean. Sly's trying to get his uh, ace tanker in this vehicle. At least I'm, I, I'm just not sure. He might actually have already had the ace tanker in it. But you can see it's very similar in design to the uh, the Italian and the French um, contestants for the European tank. In terms, this one does look uh, very much like the uh, the other designs, the Italian, the standard B. Somebody was firing at him, so somebody saw him. I think that may have been the Barask, actually, who was just in the town. Oh, there's a number of enemy tanks over there now. Now, I think, actually, those people who've, who've actually been wondering about, you know, um, various playing styles, you notice that uh, the Sly actually plays his vehicle very much in a third-player mode. From a long distance away, it only goes close up when he absolutely needs to, and doesn't really tend to use sniper view that much. Just took out the Barask, managed to get uh, a nice shot into him twice. And he got some ram hit points as well. The ramming hit points, 418, that's almost as good as a shot. So, three good bits of damage. Puts one into the strip K, 417, low roll. Nice! He got that one in as well. I thought that might be eaten by the tracks or bounce off due to the wrong angle. And he got a high roll on that one, 461. You set so much so that the strip has decided to go into cover. He doesn't want to come around that corner if he can help it. I thought for a second he was going to turn around there and go around the other way. He's facing three opponents on the other entrance there, so I think he's decided, yes, um, retreat to spend part of Valor under these circumstances, get the hell out of Dodge before the enemy comes round en masse and takes him out of the game straight away. Oh, Char Future 4! Yeah, he narrowly avoided getting hit by that guy as well. Managed to get round the corner just in time. Okay, he's asking his teammates yes, to fall back. So they can snipe at the enemy. We've got a Borsig and a SU-130PM north of the cap, or rather 
south of the camp, I should say. And I think he's going to take up a position behind these bushes and wait for the enemy to come out of the town and then snipe at them. No, he's decided to go even further back than that and use these bushes with a few trees knocked over for good measure. He's telling these guys, come back, snipe at them. Defensive is easier. If you try and face them off against in the town, you're going to get mobbed. The enemy has the town now. All he needs to do is snipe at these guys as they appear and they will start losing hit points. One more tree to knock down. Got it. I think he wants a couple more trees just to be... Or is he? No, he's actually decided to move down here so he can get shots on that Strif K. Yes, he has got shots on that one, but he lost the view as soon as he pulled back. And now, if he moves between the bushes, I think he's going to get spotted. At least he gets a shot into the VK 101P. Now he's going for the T28. Ah, not didn't get that one. There's a Skoda T50 off to his left. Not future. Yes, gets one round into that guy. And he didn't see where the shell came from. Okay. There's the T28. He's pulled back. These guys are still just on the outskirts. Char Future 4 is just gone. The Borsig got him. Nice run into the Skoda. Makes him a one shot. Enables our teammates to get a good hit. Maybe he'll take that kill himself. Kampfpanzer. Oh no, it's not the Kampfpanzer. It's Kanon and Jagdpanzer actually. And IS-3 kill shot. Yep, got him. Only 44, but it's worth it. And now VK can put this one through the sides. Yes, 411. You notice the it's point and shoot with this gun because it's so accurate. 1,480 meters per second shell velocity. Just point and shoot at the enemy and you get it right in. And he's shooting at the rear of the VK at the moment. Now he's got the sights and he's out the game. Third kill. Okay, we've got Strip off to the left, or to the right rather, and now we've got the T20 easily through the sides. That Strip is going to be a problem. He's trying to outflank us. He's going right round the edge of the town. Kanonin Jagdpanzer coming into sight, and he's gone. Oh, he was seen that time. He was close enough to the Jagdpanzer, and Schultz is now starting to hit the ground near him, including that Skoda. The Skoda's gone. He was a one shot. He's still spotted at the moment. Now he'll be unspotted. I was worried about those strips. There's two of them, actually. One's gone one way round the town uh, to our right, or the village to our right. And the other one is right at the outskirts of the town. So he's joining the SU-130PM. No, he's decided he's not going to do that. He's trying to move forwards into the centre... He's leaving the SU-130 PM all on his own. I suppose he thinks that that guy can probably take care of himself from that Strif K. Now, I'm worried about that Strif K. He's last seen in Grid, grid Square H0. And I'm pretty sure he's going to circle around and try and come at the SU-130 PM from his flank. The, the, the other Strif gets pulled back. Back there, pulling back to try and defend their cap area. There's the enemy RT GW Type B. Oh, great shot at range, and he's gone. Just driving along in the open on the middle of the map. Strip K, one of the Strip Ks, rather. Don't know which one that is. The one that fired at in the town but it's not the one who's gone around still can't see him they've gone defensive in a big way now and the trouble is that as we get closer we're more likely to be spotted by the scorpion g on the enemy team as well 
And remember, this tank doesn't have any armor, so anything that touches this is more than likely going to do some damage unless it hits the tracks. It's about the hardest armor we've got on the vehicle, is the tracks. That says something, doesn't it? <laughs> He's waiting for his teammates to show something to him so he can snipe at them from a distance. Right in the middle of the map. And the enemy can't see him. No six cents gone off. Oh, this! Oh, that's the strip that went north. Not the one that went the other way. And I'm now getting the impression that that strip that went the other way might have flipped. And if he has flipped, he might be an easy prey. There's the scorpion. Oh, and the gun let us down on that one. It's normally really, really good at long range sniping. And um, well, well, the Scorpion G has been taken out. The Progetto got him. Moving to support your position. Remember, these are the Striv uh, Ks. They've got a cramp arm body, but a the turret of a Centurion. And we bounced the round that came off the Striv. And that's a 105mm round. And there's the other one as well. So they've both been spotted. He didn't flip himself. He's just hiding from us. Okay, so the hull's weak, but the turret's strong. Yes. Low roll, though. 393. Don't want to get an exchange with these guys. Hit point for hit point, because they will come off better eventually if you if you um because that strong turret our turret's not not as strong he's looking for it oh and he's now in, just engaged he's just fired so we go in for the kill gets behind him and he knows it's up he can't retreat and now sly gets him in behind and there's the kill shot that wins the game from the pachetto And here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tanker game yet again for Sly Meerkat in the Leopard Prototype A. In fact yes he did have an ace tanker I say on both games in this in this one so it's not a case he's looking for his ace tanker he's got his ace tanker he's looking for his third mark of excellence at the moment really. He got another spot again in that game uh, for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a bruise in the middle for getting at least five critical hits, he got 11. He got a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him and a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, one third of the enemy team and one short of a top gun. If he'd taken out that strip K, if the Progetto hadn't seized it off him, then he would have ended up with a top gun for sure. So I can understand why Sly might have been a bit miffed and that's why he turned his turret towards the Progetto, but he didn't fire because obviously he didn't want to lose out on any other medals. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points for his own vehicle. He got a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team and he got a high caliber this time round because he did the most damage in the game overall. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Well top of the table when it comes to the damage 7102 hit points was the next uh, highest player was the strip k on his own team with 2774 and then the strip k on one of the, well one of the strip k's on the enemy team with 2357 when it came to kills he had the highest number of those five the progetto who kill stealed him right at the end he got three kills if he'd left that shell for sly i think shy definitely would have had a top gun no doubt about it the rear of a strip k is very weak armor and yes he'd loaded an apcr to make sure he went through either the turret or the body so it would have been his but that guy denied it to him uh when it came to the other player with three kills that was the is3 a on the enemy team and that was another of uh, sly's kills i seem to recall at least i think he got that one uh we'll just check that actually uh, IS3. He did hit an IS3 during that game. Yes, it was one of his kills. Yeah. And when it came to base XP, 
Yep, he's got that one. So top in all three columns, 1,487 went to Sly, 1,011 went to the Strip K on his team, and 951 went to the SU-130PM. And that guy did fairly well in a defensive position. He got two kills in that game and a fair amount of damage. In fact, being defensive player in this game really paid off for Sly because this tank is a sniping tank. And therefore, behind those bushes, he was able to level huge numbers of shots on the enemy to make them pay for winning the town by shooting them up the moment they came out of it. Let's have a look at the detail report. He fired 23 rounds in that game, got 19 direct hits and 19 penetrations, damage of 7,102 hit points, of which 3,196 were at more than 300 meters. Nearly half his damage done at long range. I think that's why you know the, the playstyle actually worked in this case. He was using sniper view virtually all the time during that moment, those moments, but it was paying off in a big way. But you notice that he also uses that very long strategic view to get a good situational awareness of where he is and where the enemy are whilst he's driving around. Three hits received from the enemy. Two of those penetrated. One non-penetration. Yeah, unfortunately, he did get spotted when he moved from one bush to the other after he'd sniped at all the enemy and uh, he also got one non-pen so somebody fired around at him which uh, bounced i think that was the strip case actually one of them got a non-pen by firing into his tracks as he was driving past 390 hit points blocked by armor two enemy vehicles spotted 11 enemy vehicles damaged five killed 1102 hit points of damage assistance he earned 60,794 credits in this game, 45,573 from personal, bo reserves bo personal reserves bonus, and 27,344 from battle payments. A total of 164,063 credits. I'll put my new teeth in shortly. Um, after repairs and ammunition resupply, he actually took away a profit from this game of 109,858 credits. Yes, the standard armor piercing on this gun is very, very good at long range sniping. So I think really when you're in close in battles, you prefer to have the armor piercing um, composite rigid to actually make sure that you get the penetration because you obviously you can't afford to take a miss when you're face to face with the enemy at close range and every shot of theirs will probably hit the target and do damage. So that's why he switched to APCR at close range. Long range, armor piercing's fine. It worked perfectly for him. He earned loads of credits on this game. 1,487 XP, 2,231 altogether. So two interesting games by Sly Meerkat. Both of them were ace tankers. You saw that one there and uh, on Malinovka. And then we see this one on the high ground map uh which is part of the recon maps or recon missions uh yeah it just goes to show the leopard is a good tank at long range it's um not so good close range because obviously it's got no armor so be aware if you do come up against an enemy don't trade them shot for shot because you will lose in the end because every one of their shots will do some damage whereas not every one of yours will do damage unless you use premium ammo so, I hope you enjoyed both those replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And then hang out at home watching TV. <laughs> and please do remember that let other people know that we've got this channel and that we've got a sister channel called The General where you can go watch great replays without any commentary to annoy you whatsoever. Thanks for watching.